Hello everyone, how's everyone doing today? I'm the Weather Dude. Welcome back, and today we are talking about Tropical Storm Ada, ETA, however you guys want to say it. I'm just going to call it Tropical Storm Ada because, you know, Zeta without the Z. But Tropical Storm Ada has formed in the Caribbean today, we're going to be giving the latest forecast on it. So to find out more about Tropical Storm Ada, stay tuned and enjoy. If you'd like staying up to date with the latest weather forecasts and updates, then please consider hitting the subscribe button below. Let's see how fast we can get to 2,000 subscribers. Also, to help this video's performance very much, please consider clicking the like button and sharing this video with your friends. Also, please consider watching the whole video. Thank you. Now let's get on with today's video. So yes, we're talking about Tropical Storm Ada becoming a potential hurricane. And if you guys really want to show your support, please drop a like down below. Again, if we get this to 30 likes, that would be great. Anyway, we are starting out here. We have Tropical Storm Ada in the Caribbean and a potential hurricane on our hands. Sustained winds are already at 50 miles an hour. It pretty much formed, like, I, I believe it was around overnight last night. Um, the Tropical Storm wind field is pretty small uh, to the north of the storm system, as you can see, shade in orange. Now, for now, it is heading away from Haiti, Dominican Republic, Jamaica, and Cuba, but... As you'll see towards the end of the video, all three models that I'll be talking about, such as the GFS, the GEM, and the Euro, all point this towards the Caribbean islands and maybe even Florida. So if you want to find out more about that, stay tuned to the end of the video. But we have hurricane warnings up now. Now, they're, actually, I think they were more, um, they were actually covered a wider area before, but we still do have hurricane warnings for the coast, the eastern coast of Nicaragua. Um, we also do have hurricane watches and tropical storm warnings for the eastern coast of Honduras. So Nicaragua definitely going to be in a line for impact here. Probably making landfall as a hurricane, then weakening as a depression as it heads inland. But what this map does not tell you is what happens after the five-day mark. As we head to the next seven, ten-plus days, something could redevelop through Northern Caribbean if it moves on this way, depending on that steering pattern, as I always say. Now, it is pretty close to the 5 p.m. major update, so check out the exciting community tab on my channel. If you want to find out what, what it's going to be for the 5 p.m. update, right? Now, tropical storm wind history, the tropical storm wind field is pretty much not grown in any size, right? Again, as you can see, it pretty much has stayed one size this entire time so far. It hasn't really grown, hasn't shrunk. So the wind field is still the, pretty much the same size. Now, let's take a look. Now, this is the same map as the one I showed you earlier, except we can see the exact wind strength. So National Hurricane Center is predicting that by 8 or 7 a.m. Eastern time, how did it feel to turn those clocks back on? <laughs> At 7 a.m. Eastern on November 2nd, which is tomorrow morning, this could be a 65 mile power tropical storm, but then it could grow to an 85 mile power hurricane um, and maybe even closer to 90. I'd say have a bit more time to strengthen before landfall. So National Hurricane Center so far is predicting an 85 to 90 mile power Nic Nicaragua landfall right on Bliwi. That's literally, literally going to go right over you guys. So that's also where our hurricane warning is. All right, and then it still remains a tropical storm. And the good thing about Central America and heading into Mexico is that there are some more mountainous regions in some spots. So this will definitely weaken very quickly. But it could strengthen pretty quickly if it does get back over the Caribbean. And we, we will be talking about that as well. Um, but the tropical storm force wind probability, wind field, though, that is definitely growing. I mean, we got chances for tropical storm force winds down in Costa Rica, we got chances for tropical storm force winds all the way up to Belize. So from Costa Rica to Belize, yes, that is pretty. That's a pretty big wind field. So, there, but the highest chance of tropical storm force winds is in this zone right here, anywhere from like a fifty plus percent chance for again so, uh, southeastern Honduras or eastern Honduras, and also the uh, eastern parts of Nicaragua. All right, key messages again. Ada is forecast to strengthen into a hurricane before it makes landfalls on two, early Tuesday. So. Probably not today, but tomorrow, unless it goes under some rapid intensification, which is not predicted as of now. But there will be some, definitely be some surge over a few feet, hurricane force winds, heavy rainfall. And so Thursday afternoon, the rainfall will spread through Central America and Mexico. And and actually, they're actually predicting rainfall for Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, and Central America. So Jamaica could, get, could still get hit. All right, even, if the, even if this doesn't rebound back to the north, it could still hit Jamaica. So um, definitely want to keep an eye on, on Jamaica. And... This has officially tied 2005 with the most named storms. So we're so again, 2005 we had 28 named storms. This is our 29th tropical depression, but it's our 28th named storm. So 
technically we did tie 2005 and we still have this month all right usually november activity starts to go down pretty quickly but it can still develop and i just want to put that out there tropical storms and hurricanes have formed in november all right so we could see one more is all it takes to break the 2005 all-time record all right so tropical storm ada again winds of okay this actually does say this actually says 50 knots was there all right according to this it says 50 miles an hour but the tropical timbus thing actually says 50 knots which is like 60 miles an hour um, I think that's because the aircraft reconnaissance data is flying in. Maybe they found some more stuff. They could have found some um, some stronger winds. Pressure is down to 992 millibars. I actually do have the aircraft reconnaissance pulled up, so we'll be taking a look at that now. Let's see. Has anything? All right, we're actually going to check back later in the video. This is as of 4 o'clock, I think. I don't know, because it's 320 right now. But they are getting the latest satellite data there. All right, and, and it's actually as of 3 o'clock, I'm sorry. And, and there you go. As you can see, we are seeing some winds of around 50 knots. So maybe they are picking up some stronger winds on the northern side of that storm system. And pressure is down to 993 millibars. National Hurricane Center, I think they picked up. Let me actually, let me see what the, let's see. They picked up 1,000. So yeah, pressure has definitely gone down. I think in the next update, the National Hurricane Center definitely needs to update next. But we're going to come back to the reconnaissance later on in the video. All right, so we got the sea surface temperature anomalies. Are again above average in the Caribbean all the way through landfall. It's got some slightly above average waters to contend with, and that's always good for development. And then the actual sea surface temperatures again well into the 80s, probably most likely around the mid 80s or so. All right, now this is the other aircraft constants map. Again, we I would definitely be taking a look at this later on in the video, but they are picking up actually some winds beyond 55 knots, and they're not even like through the storm yet. So this may have undergone some, I wouldn't say rapid intensification, but I think some intensifying definitely did occur um, after the last update. All right, storm position as of 2 p.m. is right around 78 and a half degrees west-ish, and I'd say around 15 degrees north. So that's how, those are your coordinates, and I'll be tracking again towards Nicaragua and Honduras. Nicaragua probably getting hitting more. It might get hit more. Uh, but again, when a storm comes in at this angle, it's going to be to the north where I get the most surge. So Honduras might actually get more of the surge. All right, it all depends on where it makes landfall exactly. That definitely does matter. And for track guidance, you can already see a few models actually bring it back out over the open Caribbean waters. A couple actually bring it into the, into the Pacific. So you remember that it was the first storm when Tropical Storm Amanda in the Pacific crossed over into the Atlantic and became a storm in the Atlantic. Well, the same thing could happen in the Pacific, except it's backwards. But a lot of the models are actually indicating it bending north and coming back into the Caribbean. We will definitely have to watch for that. And the GEFS model tracks, again, this is what scares me. Like I told you in the last update, there will be strengthening all the way up to landfall. But it's after that that kind of scares me a bit because a lot of the models have the pressure going down to, you know, pretty low amounts, 970, 960. Uh, and that means the winds are going to get stronger and stronger. And a few of them do bring it over Cuba and close to Florida. So Florida, Cuba, Jamaica, definitely got to keep your eye out, even as far as east is haiti and dominican republic still it could it could like do like a bend all the way back there but most likely if it were to turn north i would definitely say cuba the bahamas and florida definitely keep your eyes out and then you got the geps where most models actually bring closer to the pacific ocean than the atlantic ocean not you can see on this set of models not many bring it over the caribbean and the gulf of mexico and we have the intensity guidance now this is what interests me and this is how i know the models are calling for it to go back over the caribbean here's why so as you can see, strengthening all the way up until landfall, actually a lot of models make it a Cat 2, even though I would say majority make it a Cat 1, but a lot of them do make it a Cat 2 as well, which is pretty interesting. So that is a possibility. All we need is 96 miles an hour for that. Now, now of course, it does strengthen after it interacts with land, but notice some of the models do actually bring it back up slightly. So that means a rebound in strength, and it means it's emerging over the Caribbean. It's starting to re-strengthen a little bit. So that's what we have to keep our eyes out for. All right, now, dry air right now, there is no dry air in sight with this thing. I don't think dry air is an issue. It might be an issue as it makes its way north if it does enter the Gulf. Definitely going to have some issues with dry air. But if it stays over Cuba and the Bahamas, there's really no dry air in sight. There's a pocket of low dry air, or none actually. So that's definitely going to um, definitely help with development. And wind shear right now, so it's actually starting to build a little barrier around itself in the sense that there's not actually much shear around it. All right, at least in like like right where the storm is. There is some shear surrounding it. Um, definitely some shear to the north, like over Haiti, Dominican Republic, as well as eastern Cuba. But really not much shear really to be found. 
All right, and mostly shear values are mostly below 30 knots, and and usually a tropical system can't handle anything below 30 knots. And if, it was, if this was like a major hurricane, it would definitely be able to handle it. Now, we have our shift diagnostic message here. As you can see, as I just said earlier, shear is low now, but it could go up a little bit. Uh, sea surface temperatures are 29 all the way through close to 30, so definitely we got a, we got a check mark there for the sea surface temperatures. Storm speed, they're actually saying it could slow down, which does make sense. It will most likely slow down over land, and then once it gets back over to Caribbean, it might accelerate again. Then we got our heat content, which is still very high right now, well into the 40s and 50s, but obviously as it goes on land, it could drop into the 20s. And if it reemerges over the Caribbean, heat content might start going back up again, which could, again, help with development. So, so really, as you can see, not many things are going against this system. Like up until its first landfall point and up until it has the possibility to come out over the Caribbean, we got warm, more, we got warm ocean water, we got good heat content, good oceanic heat content. Right? The only thing, and the dryer is not bad either, the only thing I really think is might be hurting us a little bit is the wind shear, but even that doesn't seem to be too bad. It seems to be sustainable to some degree. Now we got the GFS model, and I'm going to show you obviously the GFS, the Canadian and the European, and they call for a 973 millibar storm at its landfall right there in northern, that's northern Nicaragua and southern Honduras, or eastern Honduras, if you want to call it that. And then it dips into South America, okay? It's And like I said, it stalls around for a bit. I mean, this is this is about five days out. You really can't seem to find a low pressure. It does redevelop over the northern Caribbean again. And there you go. The low starts spinning, kind of like that Central American gyre, and then we get some to develop. And there it is, right there in eastern Cuba. So it's a bit farther to the east, but watch what happens. All right, I'm going to take it out a bit further. And then it kind of just slingshots to the west, to the northwest, right up the Bahamas and right into, like, coming, like, head on on Miami and Homestead as, like, a good tropical, decent tropical storm. Then it could latch up with a cold front that's coming through the east out, right on Veterans Day there, and it could go up the west, and that could drag it up the west coast of Florida and actually have it stalling over Florida, which would be disastrous, and then kind of dying out. So that's the GFS prediction as of now, as of the, I believe this is 12Z. This That's of 12Z. So let's let's play it out with the cyclonic vorticity signature. Again, a lot of its energy still does hang around. Again, you got energy. That's why in this, in this region, in Mexico and Central America, there's a lot of energy that hangs around here anyway. So when you add a tropical system to that, it just means total disaster, all right? And I hate to say it like that, but it's, it's gonna be the, the potential truth here, all right? And there, there's all of its energy moving over Eastern Cuba, right over Jamaica yet again, as well as parts of Haiti. And then it just gets literally slingshotted back over the Bahamas and in through Florida. All right, so definitely keep an eye out on this storm if you live in those regions I just showed you. Now, they're actually, so there's a GFS. It's very tiny, but there is definitely a lot of purple in there. Definitely a category one hurricane. Let me see actually if I can, let me see if I can maybe focus in on the storm a little bit without it being screwy. All right, there we go. Now, sometimes the map acts a little bit weird when I do this, but you can now obviously see the purples, and you can also see on the top right of your screen, 63.4 knots is the maximum wind found inside the storm system, right on that northern side. Now, if you guys if you guys know about hurricanes, you know that all it takes for a Cat 1 hurricane is 64 knots. So this is definitely a borderline Cat 2 at this point, at its landfall. Then it reemerges back over northern Caribbean. There it is. All right. And then a tropical storm, and then there it is getting slingshotted right back into Florida, at this point, I see winds of about 50 knots, so about 60 mile an hour winds, but still a good, decent tropical storm over Florida, and then it kind of just sits there and stalls out. All right, now we got the Canadian model, the GEM model. So they have a forecast landfall about 984, 988, so a bit weaker, but still a sustainable Cat 1 slash tropical storm. The rain field at this point, the, the shield of rain and wind has pretty much grown a lot at this point, and that will continue as it does strengthen. It sits there. Now, if you remember my last, uh, the video I did yesterday, where I talked about Invest 96L because it wasn't developed yet at the time, and I talked about a Canadian model, how it had it stalling over Central America and Mexico and dying out, right? I'm sure you guys have seen that video, all right? Now, kind of the same thing, but this time, instead of just sitting there forever, now they have the low reemerging over the Gulf of Mexico, with probably, it looks a bit subtropical to me because all the rain is over here and the low is over here. But they do have something emerging over the Gulf and then making a landfall on the northern Gulf Coast yet again. <laughs> I 
I mean, Louise, New Orleans has been in the cone, the NHU cone, like over seven times, I think. And the Gulf Coast has been in the cone probably like seven to nine times, I'd say at least. So another potential, hey, you guys cannot get a break. And that's Veterans Day. After Veterans Day, I think activity is going to be calming down for the most part, which is good. Now, here's a cyclonic vortex signature. Again, holding most of that tropical cyclonic energy right up to landfall. And the good thing is it's not massive. Like the, the focused area of the most cyclonic energy is in a very tight area where it makes landfall. For example, Nicaragua. But we will still see some low to moderate energy expand around the storm system. And that is definitely going to create some big impacts. So again, there is some of its energy and merges over the Gulf as a much bigger storm, mind you. All right. Now we see the, even though there's a little bit less energy, um, it's definitely a lot more expansive. It's a lot, it's a lot bigger of a storm. All right. And then there's a storm coming into New Orleans yet again, Biloxi, Mobile. I'm not saying this is going to happen, guys. Stuff can still change. I just showed you GFS and the gem. Uh, but we're looking at European next as our last map here. All right, but this is there's definitely one of the possibilities re-emerging as a tropical storm yet again over the Gulf. But it looks like when it does redevelop, whether it goes through the Caribbean again, whether it goes up to the Gulf again, it looks like it's going to be scarred a little bit. I think when it redevelops, if it does redevelop after it makes its landfall in Nicaragua, it shouldn't redevelop too much. Maybe a tropical storm, a strong TS at most. But up until its landfall point, it could be a Cat 1 or even a Cat 2 at landfall. All right, so again, stay tuned to my uh, community tab on my channel if you want to find out the 5 p.m. Eastern update. And the European model, let's finally take a look at the European. Again, dropping in through, there it is, Nicaragua right there. Nice, decent Cat 1 hurricane landfall at least. And then there it is. Now it gets slingshotted this way into the Caribbean. There, there it is in the Northern Caribbean. We're talking about um, mon next Monday morning. So not this Monday, but the next Monday morning. Then coming right through Western Cuba, right there on the morning of Veterans Day, 8 a.m. on the 11th, and then that's as far as the European goes. I'm sorry. All right. Like, like actually, like, it legit only goes out 240 hours. So, but I'm based on the last frame there, I would probably, if I had to predict the rest of this, it would probably have it going into Florida. So European also has it going into Florida. All right, and that's definitely something we're going to have to keep watch over. Now, before I end the video for today, let's take a look at the aircraft reconnaissance map one more time. And I hope I'll be updating you guys on this in the community tab as well. But looks like mostly some winds up around 50 knots. And if we take, I like looking at this map too. All right, and it looks like, again, at one point they found the winds of about eh, 50, just between 55 and 60 knots, which is definitely at least 65, 70 miles an hour or so. And the pressure, um, the pressure has fallen to around, according to this, it says 993, which is, I think, what the aircraft has picked up. So National Hurricane Center says 50 miles an hour and a thousand millibars of pressure. So they're definitely a bit behind. So this thing has definitely gone under some more strengthening. We'll definitely be watching it. Moving west at 15 miles an hour for now. Stay tuned for updates, guys. Stay safe, stay awesome. I am the weather dude signing off. Till next time, I will catch you guys in the next video.